What's the format for this? Just a friendly conversation. But Tim and I don't, aren't friendly, so how do we? Wow. Well, well, just an antagonist. Did we have done some preliminary <laughs> emotional check-ins before then just to make sure are we are we good? Are we I'm good? kidding. Um, uh, yeah, I, I thought you were talking about things, cool things to talk about from the game. And I was thinking about what we went through to bring Helmet and Bob to light. And I thought we'd, you'd like to talk about that. And I was going to ask you about the early formation of that relationship and then just what you thought about it and how it was done and everything. Yeah. So at first you had suggested that, uh, are we starting? Wait, are we going now? Did we start? You can. I was, I was still talking about what we were going to talk about. <laughs> oh, I thought we had a very natural lead in. And then... No, I no, no. I, no. You really, I just would turn on the charm a lot more and make a lot more sound effects. Okay. Sure. I'm excited to see you be trying. I'm glad this isn't two player too, because they would be using all this junk at the start of it. I, 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 I'm chatter. recording it right now and can oh. use it however I want. You can't oh, stop me. Man. <laughs> Hello, everybody. This is your content and community manager, Harper, here. We are a year, it's been a year since <sighs> Psychonauts. Gasp. Psychonauts 2. Not since Psychonauts. It's been like 22 years. years since Psychonauts or something like that. It's been Don't a bit. Don't make me do math. I won't do it either. I was a writer and not a mathematician. But we are talking about a variety of things for Psychonauts 2. And we have uh, Mr. Tim Jafer, writer and yeah. such, along with a wonderfully talented designer, James Marion. And we are going to be talking about uh, a very special part of our game. Very... Uh, I think a part that uh, plenty of fans have really latched onto that they've really enjoyed um, just kind of hovering around some of our levels, including uh, Psyching Sensorium and Bob's Bottles and everything, which is the relationship itself between Bob and Helmut. So I was wondering, um, I was wondering if, if either of you could help us understand, help us understand that makes it sound like a, the world's biggest mystery. Obviously somebody wrote this, but where, what was the initial genesis of this idea? Do we ever know? that this was exactly uh, the direction that we wanted to take, take Helmet and Bob, or their initial drafts where this didn't exist, or was it different? Um, usually, when we talk about these things, we want to trace it from the very, very beginning to what people saw at the end. So let's get started, I suppose. Yeah, that sounds great, because I, I want to talk about this just because I was so happy with how Helmet and Bob turned out and how people responding to it you know, people how they feel about the story people really seem to to like it and um i just thought it was interesting because it went through some changes and um james here helped out a lot make that a lot better than it was going to be and um and the whole process i think is was really interesting um and so i want to talk about that and get james's take on that because i bet we probably remember totally different things i don't know i just i've watched some uh documentary footage about it and i was like that is not how i remember that going but um, yeah, I've been watching some of the same footage, and the, I, I completely forgot that it started off being pitched as Helmet being in love with Ford, which I think is is a very interesting. Well, and that's what I remember it as. But I thought we just saw the footage that showed it was Bob. It started with Bob. There's a there's a pitch meeting. I'm all nervous because I'm about to pitch. Um, uh, looking back, and it's so it's so embarrassing to me to say that like there's never been a gay character in any double fine games or any game that I think they've done. I was like, what? Is that true? Could that possibly be true? And mm -hmm. it, it, I think it was true. Unless it's like um, uh, something I'm forgetting. <laughs> would you say that, would you say that that's because you weren't comfortable putting that in one of your games or is it just the fact that double fine games typically not to be like particularly sexual or romantic? Uh, probably, probably both. I mean, I, I think, you know, a lot of it, I think it gets into these broader topics about representation in games because a lot of it is you might think some of it is done, you know, maliciously. And I think a lot of it is just done by following the path of least resistance or just just what people are more comfortable with is obviously their own situations. They're it's easier to write what you know, you know, and 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 fear of getting it wrong is just such a strong fear. So you can see that I in that first pitch meeting, I'm pitching the idea of like. What you know? What if Bob is gay? And I'm so nervous about pitching it because I'm like, oh god, if I could, if I mess this up, it's going to be worse. And um, and I think that's too bad because I think that's part of the reason why so many things are not represented in in games or movies or anything. That the if the author is one is uh, from one group, they're afraid to to represent another group. And the, and you can talk about like ways around that, but it it is it is a it is a thing. And I think I, is having you know a guide really helped me go through that that process but i i remember that i pitched it as a love triangle and i thought i thought it was now i thought it was um 
wasn't it Bob in that pit? In that pit? that might be right. Yeah, he's he's the, the sad one. There's a perception of a love triangle between Ford, Lucy, and Bob, and it was going to be a big dun 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 reveal uh, during the final battle that it was that Bob was in love with Ford, not Lucy, and that's what distracted them during the battle and, and caused maybe Helmet to be you know injured. Um, and that's natural for me to write because I, I love dumb big twists, like you know, just big dramatic moments, like in Broken Age, just like. Oh, no, yeah. And Second still has a bunch of those twists, but I'm drawn to those. And then um, after, I think it was after that meeting, you pitched like a different idea. And I just, and it, yeah. Yeah, I think my reaction to the idea of Bob's love being unrequited was like uh, another one. Like, and like, like, I didn't want another sad, unrequited <laughs> gay love, you know? <laughs> um, and I, we did a lot of talking, me and the level team did a lot of talking about like, would the second not to be this welcoming place for gay people? Um, so like, obviously this isn't everyone's experience, but I grew up in like a conservative place. I went to Catholic school. And so my experience with homophobia was people seeing like, well, you being gay is a choice you're making and it's an immoral choice. And, and even as I was like discovering I was gay, I was like, why would I make this choice? Why would I make this sinful choice? And and so the idea of the psychonauts to me, it's this really potent idea where like any kind of homophobia or transphobia or racism or anything that's that relies on, you know, this person is fundamentally the, different than me inside. Um, it's like completely laid bare is fundamentally wrong, right? Because you're literally inside their heads. Mm. And I love that. I love the idea that in addition to all the other things the psychonauts are working on, they're able to see like that people are naturally the same in these ways and they're naturally different in these other ways. Um, so I, I, I really wanted to, I was hoping we could emphasize the fact that the second knots would be like a de facto supportive place for anyone who is different and naturally different, right? Um, and then, you know, I did find it funny that the first two levels I worked on, I was like, make them gay. Like the first two characters I had any, any fingers on, I was like, put them together. Do you have any um, ideas for this level, James? I've got a couple. <laughs> yeah, it's my first idea for every level. Um, but you know, like I was dating my my fiance Aiden at the time. I just started dating him, and he's very much like Bob. He's like this really quiet guy, and I'm very much like Helmet. I'm this really obnoxious, loud person. Um, and so I was like, I was like, yeah, let's put them together. And it, and it also added this real sense of tragedy that that Bob had found like an accepting place for himself. He had found this place where he was accepted, and everything worked out for him. And then it was taken away from him. And I think that's a a very a way more potent form of tragedy than just like pining after sexy young Ford, you know. <laughs> well, you should have seen him when he was younger. He was really, um, he's really hot. suave, he's crazy, real suave guy. I just thought it was an interesting lesson for me to like go from. I'm so used to the dramatic twists, but like, okay, you're gonna have this relationship. It's gonna be this dun dun dun. What if this? And then your response was kind of like, well, how about that? But what? First of all, what if it's twice as much? And secondly, like, what if it's just normal? What if it's totally just kind of chill and everyone's cool about it and it's not very dramatic and it's not very earth shattering and scandalous or anything? And I was like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah good. And it took me a second. I was kind of like, you're changing my thing. But then I was like, oh, that is that is a lot better. If it actually is just like a the sweet thing that's going on. You know? Did it feel like it deflated the idea at all? Well, no, I mean, there's still were plenty of like big reveal. It was just better for that. I feel for that topic, it's better for that. It made it more special in a way that it was not uh, blown out of special. You know what I mean? Yeah. It made it. It made it nicer, and it, um, and it made it best. So thank you for helping me uh, not make that mistake and make that um, make it oh, much better. Yeah. Anytime, Tim. Uh, I mean, I I just think like the reveal being like, oh, this character is actually gay, and that's why they're sad or they're moody or they're angry or upset mm -hmm. is like I think for bad actors that could just be a goof. You know, like that could be seen as like what a loser like what a loser this this gay character is um and I'm, I'm glad we we didn't do that i'm glad that like they're very sweet in the game and spoiler alert like when they're reunited and they like he holds his pinky and stuff it's like it's very sweet and and it's not called attention to in a way that's like look how crazy this is look how crazy it is that we're doing a gay relationship and yeah. i i love that so from a practical design level, right, I would imagine, obviously, some of the writing comes first. And then how do we start to realize that in the levels themselves? Because one of the things that people talk about all the time with Psychonauts is the way that the levels reflect the characters. That's why there's millions of YouTube videos about uh, 
Sasha's shooting gallery and, you know, Milkman conspiracy. And now we have videos about these new levels from fans who love breaking that stuff down. Does that, does this relationship, once you know it's such a core part of who these people are, because when you love someone, obviously that's, that's such a big foundational part of who you are as an individual. How does that affect the way that you approach the design of a level? How does that affect the way that Helmet might express himself in the sensorium? How does that affect Bob's um, sorrow and his level, how that might manifest or, or things like that? Um, I mean, I can't take credit for any whole level, right? Like I worked with Seth on- on. Just try it, just try, go for it. They, no okay. one's gonna watch this. I made every level in six That's months. There you go. Uh, I worked with Seth on Bob's Bottles and I worked with Joshua on, on Helmet's level. And it's really cool the way they see their partners in those levels. Cause you know, for Helmet, it is a very natural part of his life. And it's built into the level in a really natural way. And you just see like hearts and, and loving imagery anytime, uh, anytime Bob is a part of it. Um, whereas in Bob's level, because this happy love turned into a tragedy, it's kind of, it's put into a bottle and it is, it is like all of what should be these happy memories of cake and of the wedding and of the reception are, are literally drowned out, right? And are, are presented as like bleak and, and grim and the cake falls away to reveal like a skeleton Viking, right? Um, and I think that's really wonderful. And I also think it's just really cool that like, and I don't know, Tim, if you feel like this was intentional or like if you realize this during the process, but like we released like a Microsoft backed AAA game where half of a level is a gay wedding cake. <laughs> that's, that's very cool and weird and, and unique. <laughs> uh you know we just kind of went with it we we're just flowing where the, the story the story went I, and the, um yeah they are both they're different but helmets does get, have a sad when he gets to his his part where um he feels like you know there are these there's sadder things near the end of the level where you find that he has mm -hmm. all these things bottled up not not as much as as bob um but um yeah bob's uh, you know his idea of just it being so painful he's locked it all up and then when you finally do get to see it it is it is still sweet memories but he doesn't want to think about it anymore because he's so he's so sad about about yeah. what happened and it's our second slow walk in the game people said they were going to complain about slow walks but no one's complained about slow walks yeah. no if you do if you do a slow walk well it's good and people like this one although i will say to burst the illusion a bit, I think speedrunners do try and jump a little at this point to go a little <laughs> bit faster. So there is a lovely wedding going on, but they are hopping a little bit. I think we saw that when we watched uh, our speedrun of the game uh, towards we, we the end of forgot, last year. We also forgot to have Raz put his fingers up to his ear like he's talking to Mission Control. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. So I guess I wanted to, to talk a little bit about um, I, I suppose, how do I phrase this? You know, we're talking about the ways that we incorporate, incorporate these things into levels. How soon do you know that you want to do this even in small ways like figments or, or things like that as well that aren't just uh, things that are, you know, the larger geography or, or, or design of the levels themselves? How soon is it something where you're talking with artists about incorporating it into, you know, every little bit of DNA that you can find? Mm. I mean, I think we make these levels in layers and um, and it's very collaborative. And sometimes uh, you might come up with the initial idea you know, months or years before someone comes and lays another layer on top of it. So I think it was about having everyone on the team kind of feel the same way about Bob and Helmet and feel like they understood their their story so that when someone came in to build the geometry for the level and then someone later came and put the figments there that they were thinking about the story and kind of like what hasn't been told yet. Because I think the figments were great for that. They could tell the parts of the story that we haven't told through cutscenes or level geometry or anything like that. So it's like every every person who touches the game, a different type of artist or a different type of writer or whatever would just lay in their take on those characters and it gets deeper and deeper in that way. So yeah, and I mean one of the reasons Psychonauts 2 came together in general is that like everybody really was working toward such a common purpose. You know, like everyone knew what we were trying to get to in every facet of the game i think and that's why all of our individual choices all contributed to a really great thing and i think two great examples are uh bob and helmet's relationship and ford and lucy's relationship like i think the game does such a good job of metering out like the explicitness of those relationships existing and and information about them over the course of multiple levels um you know as you travel through the different ford levels and learn about ford and lucy being in love and as you travel through bob and helmet's levels and you go from like hints that like, oh, their relationship might be more than friendship. And then 
to like dance around on top of a wedding cake. Yeah. So Tim, this is, I think this is more for you if I can uh, do that for a moment in terms of writing and, and James, you can chime in here too, uh, in terms of when you got a sense of it as a, as a designer, but I feel like a lot of this game, you know, if we look at the first Psychonauts, there's so much involving the campers. And of course we have the interns here, but there's a great deal of this game that deals a great deal that deals <laughs> good job, uh, repetition on my part. Um, how, I think we have a lot more adults who are who are given the spotlight too. Is that something that comes about when you're writing? Is that something that you start off saying, hey, I wanna put a spotlight specifically on these adults? Um, because I think I think it's interesting the way in which our, our fans have a very large age range from, from folks who are younger and identify with the campers who I think there are some folks who tell me that they, they appreciated seeing um, characters like the Psychic Six, who also still had, you know, issues to sort out, even though they were older. Is, is that something that you start off thinking, well, it's time has passed. I, now it's time to cover these things. Like, how do you approach that? Oh, it's just that I'm older now. And so being old is cool. So that's the main thing. I was like, well, what's cool now? Well, me. You know, I, uh, I mean, uh, I, some, so many things seem kind of accidental in that we were just wanting to tell the story of those stumps in the first game and those mm -hmm. those characters were founders and so they just happened to be it happened to be that age they really was not a, like in second it's two it's three days later but 60 years later in terms of what characters are focused on it was just the um it was just the story that was being th that those are the characters that were interesting in that location i guess to me for sure but it's subconsciously is because i'm old and so i'm interested in older people I, I, it. I think it's I think it's so cool that we have such unusual protagonists. It's like it's just a bunch of old people. <laughs> like, I, I think that's really great. I think it, I, that's something also I find really appealing about Helmet and Bob specifically. It's just mm -hmm. like when you do see gay relationships in media, it's it's often like two very attractive people that are young, and that's normally the case because like I don't know, studios want to make it appealing to people, or like want to make sure the most number of people like that relationship as possible. And here it's like two fat old guys like one of whom is like extremely cripplingly depressed um like i love that i think that's great i think it's a, a really unusual form of representation that, that that we don't get very often do you think that helps broaden the appeal because i know when people look at psychonauts now and, and james i know you definitely know because you're talking to fans in our discord very often we have such a you know like i was alluding to you before an age range of younger folks who who see this series as a sort of um exploratory world for themselves and for their friends and then we have older fans who also um kind of find it holding a mirror to themselves now do you do you find that it's that this sort of representation also helps um broaden the amount of people we can speak to the amount of people that we reach out to or is that just a an accidental byproduct of <laughs> just happening to have these these two silly old fellas yeah it's a funny question because it should like narrower appeal right <laughs> like it should like it appeals specifically to people who look exactly like me <laughs> like but I do think that when people see such an unusual relationship being portrayed in such a loving tender way it is a real signifier of like this is a place where you're safe to be yourself and experience who you are um and I think I actually have a question for you Tim um like we I see our fans very often you know shipping characters or applying labels to characters that are definitely not explicit in the game right like saying like these characters are trans or this person is in a relationship with this person the same gender um characters who don't have that kind of storyline in the game um all canon all canon well i was gonna say like what is your reaction to seeing fans do that kind of thing because for me it's it's very it's really heartwarming to see people really wanting to see themselves in this world because they see it as such an appealing world for that kind of person to live in yeah, I think it's really nice. I mean, I think just someone engaging with anything you create, let alone um, seeing themselves in it and and wanting to develop it past what they see in the in the work itself, I think it's really means you 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 reach somebody, you touch you touch somebody with what you did. And and if the characters feel, you're always going for like the characters felt real to me. And if they if they're doing that, it means that they felt real to them. And I think that's that's great. Yeah. 
So let me ask a harder question then, because we're, we're talking about <laughs> we're talking about the things that we thought worked, the things that drew people in. Do we look at you know where we are now? I think we're very proud of the game. Obviously, it's done it's done very well <laughs> to say the least. Do we do we look at anything in the game in terms of this relationship or? Uh, how we're you know using our characters to express certain feelings that we feel um, you know fell by the wayside or things that we could have done more of or or ideas that we uh, left behind anything like that um, you know or is this exactly you know Nailed it. exactly what we wanted right like, Nailed it. you can you can say that too that's totally I know, I'm just fine. trying to think of of the concepts besides of course we always wanted to tell the story of uh bob and ford going back for a helmet's body i mean bob and a helmet going back for his body do you know how many people ask me about that for dlc <laughs> just, they're like oh the was, dlc is like a mission to Grolovia under that the was ice. our number one dlc wish list on the team too that, that would was be so cool was it I mean, I have, never say I never. have, I have a weird thing to bring up, and you can cut this if it's too weird. No, it's fine. But yeah, there were definitely it, times, no. there were definitely times on the level teams where we would talk about maybe like an ethnicity that a character would be that we would do a level about mm -hmm. and how that would work. Where we would say like, well, we just can't. We don't have anyone on the team who represents this culture. You know, like we just don't have anyone who can speak authentically to it, and we would kind of bypass that idea as a result. I think it's a really good argument for why having a diverse staff is is really great. Um, I know uh, someone who's no longer at the company, um, we were talking for a long time about a level about gender and about like a non-binary character who who we can go into their brains and kind of see that firsthand. Um, at the time, there were like a lot of really horrible things happening around trans people. And then I remember that person saying like, I, I love the idea of this level and I love the, the idea of why we would be doing it. But, you know, who can speak authentically to that in the studio and can we do that as a result? Um, which I thought was interesting. And I think, you know, after the game was released, we had, um, we got, you know, comments about some of the levels we do have in the game and whether or not they're authentic. And I think, I think they are as a result of our staff and who worked on those levels, but I, I think it's a, you know, it's a valid criticism either way. Um, but I, I think it's, it's really, it was really interesting for me to see like, to be in a studio where we're the like the game is so creative and there's so you can do literally anything with a level in psychonauts right because it's a dream world it's a it's a brain world um and as a result you can really see the direct connection between who is on a level team and who's on the game's team and what kind of stories are able to tell as a result um yeah that's the end of my thought i didn't think of a good conclusion <laughs> for that little speech but um, yeah. i i think it's fair sorry to cut you off there tim sorry to cut off my boss for a moment um I think it's fair uh, just to talk on my own for a minute because I, when I was a journalist, I wrote about this a little, James. There's that's a labor concern to an extent, mm -hmm. right? In terms of what your studio looks like and whether or not representation itself is enough. Which I don't personally think that just having a character is enough. Some people might disagree with me. I think it's always important to include certain voices in that process, both for authenticity's sake and also just to make sure that. Um, you know, from a labor standpoint, everything is equitable, but obviously sometimes it's, it's, you know, you can't, you know, Tim was able to ask for assistance in this, but obviously Tim, you're the one who's writing at the same time. And, you know, I think if I can be so bold, it sounds like you were very relieved to have people to, to speak to. Um, do you think without those resources, you maybe would have um, held off in the end, or do you think? Um, well, let's be clear. I did not ask for it. James just like came. <laughs> He's just like Tim. I got this change for you, and I was like, "What? How dare you?" I mean, it's a, it's a joke, but it's actually in some ways it could be it could be tricky. Putting you know you you want to have obviously representation in the staff, um, but you don't want to turn them into like oh now you're a spokesperson for an entire you know right. Uh, person uh, a whole group of people you know but in some ways it was it is actually huge relief when someone comes forward with feedback as opposed to you like if i had cornered james and like, james <laughs> he right. been like why are you asking me why are you like you're a gay something? right <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> um but so that that could be really because you don't want to put people in a corner some people just want to be left alone just come on i just want to i just want to work here and not talk about this stuff and some people you know I, I, a lot of people have many different thoughts so i think you have to be um, find ways to allow people to feel comfortable. Like I think James hopefully felt like 
obviously felt that you could bring that up without feeling scared of my reaction to it, you know. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, that's I guess the the answer to me was just making creating an environment where people feel like they 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 can and are invited to bring that sort of feedback to you because you can't no one no one deeply understands or belongs to all different groups you know you've, you're gonna have to if you're gonna do any writing you're gonna have to write about outside of your group and um and i think it's a, there's a good lesson in there because if you do if you are afraid of of, of, t- of taking this risk like representation is, a, is a, can be seen as a risk for you if you're afraid of it then you'll always just write about people that look and sound like you, you know, forever. And so, um, and this, and you, you will make mistakes and you will, there will be, it'll always fall short in some way. Like you'll, you'll do your best and then there will be, you know, someone will find something inaccurate about it, but it's about doing your best and, and reaching as far as you can and kind of building on what's been done before. And I think art progresses in that way over, over time. And I think, um, it's about just not, it's easy, you know, it's, it's about basing things on, on humans. Like you're trying to find the humanity in, in everybody. And the things that connect, so like being able to write like love dialogue between Helmut and Bob was just about writing like human love, you know, dialogue, right? right. It was like it's a very common, some common language there, and um, it was all about basing it on um, like real people instead of stereotypes. Like it's very easy to reach into a bag of tricks of stereotypes that have been have been used and just be like, these are my signifiers, so you know that this person belongs to this group, and then you kind of get stories that are based on that they fit very standard storylines and stuff like that so kind of smashing through that and just using even if it's just someone you met in your own life and 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 about how they talked about things and and using their perspective to make it the character real it's just it's just good writing in general but also makes all those other issues um more more successful yeah less hurtful for sure not to blow too much smoke but like i can't think of a workplace where people are more comfortable like coming to management and to tim with concerns whether it's about creative decisions or whether it's about like working conditions like people are very open and double fine about things they're not pleased with you know um i'm sure for for better and for worse way too open way too comfortable but like i knew that day one you know when when we were talking about the helmet and bob stuff i was only a double fine for like a few months um and i already knew that it was a place where i could be comfortable saying like hey like this uh this feels slightly chirpier than we might want to have in the game Mm -hmm. so maybe we can make some adjustments Yep, in collaboration because like it's really hard to do that kind of stuff by your by your own. In general, just collaborating with the the, the broadest team possible because people stop all the time. Very grateful. There's there's things just you know sometimes just in the recording studio with Chris Brown should be like this word. Do you know this also means this? And I'll be like, oh my god, Oops. thank you for well, <laughs> stopping you me meant- from doing that. <laughs> you I mentioned think- recording. Oh, sorry. I was going to say really quick that like in the documentary, there's this moment where Zach says. It's very cute that Tim still gets nervous when he's pitching ideas to the team. And I actually think that's like probably pretty important because like it reveals that you are like vulnerable about the stuff that you're pitching to the team and you're you are open to suggestions and you are open to the idea that it is not the perfect right way to go forward. And I think that 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 gives off that air of like suggestions. Welcome. I'm welcome. I'm happy to bring the self-doubt to any meeting. I was going to say, you mentioned uh, Chris Brown and recording, which Mm. brings me to a kind of lighter question, which is we have two actors. We have Jack Black and we have uh, Brian Sommer, you know, Bob and Helmet. Do they surprise you when when you finally see what this is? Um, Is Helmet, who you like, not even from this perspective of of Bob and Helmet, but just in general, or, you know, does Helmet, is Helmet who you, imagine in your mind or does jack turn it into something else does does brian make it into into something else either um now that you've been able to see them kind of as their own folks instead mm-hmm. of folks on a page or in a computer screen that you've been working on you know for a couple of years how does it feel i mean the doctors always they always take it somewhere different and take it so much farther than you could and the, the actors and animators like the, because the animators do the a lot of the physical acting of it so together they they bring uh, just so much more dimension to it than you write. Cause you could go so many different directions with that, just the text, you know, and then, you know, Chris is directing in the studio. So um, you're just really, I'm just really grateful for the, like, another artist coming and taking your work and then taking it, running with it is just really, um, it's really exciting to see uh, how it ends up. Yeah, they're great. Did I mention that they're great? They're really great. They seem pretty cool. Pretty cool. They're pretty, they're, they're pretty cool. So I don't want to keep us, too too long although like i said we could chat all day if we'd like i suppose 
the dramatic question is what's next? What's next for us? What's next for the world? What's next for Bob and Helmet? Is there anything? I don't know what I'm saying anymore. <laughs> How are we all doing? There's that he animated wants to make future them... coming out about Bob yeah. And yes. Yeah. DreamWorks. <laughs> DreamWorks animated feature from the yeah. makers of B movie. Is that them? Could be them. You know, if you're talking about B movie, you're pretty close to the end. So it's true. We must be. Uh, we must look, be at the end. I want to thank you both. I want to just in terms of uh, getting to work with both of you. It's always nice, Tim. Nice James. to work with you as well. <laughs> well. You're both very passionate, and I hope that this conversation opens the door a little for people who see something and Bob and Helmet or see something in this game in general, or just want to know a little bit about how things are done here at Double Fine. Um, any last words? That sounds ominous. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Harper. Thank you, James, for uh, making that much better than it was going to be. Right. It, was a, it was a great example of collaboration on Second Nets, too. It's one of the things I'm happiest about having worked on. Perfect. And I'm very grateful that you were able to, you were, willing to let me contribute in this way. I'm so happy when someone else does my job. 